like the old saying goes, it's all about location, location. Um, with this area, with San Antonio and Barcelona, it's a fantastic area. Um, so we wanted to try and draw the light and the reflection and the, the visuals of Barcelona and to, into the apartment. The idea really was for the mirrored cube to meet you like as a gatehouse really. So as you come in, you can see the space amplified, the angle where you have yeah, the whole of the ice champlet coming, coming into your apartment. You can see the foliage from the street. This is the only real point of direct light coming in, whereas the other two areas are onto party walls. And what we wanted to do is try to get this light into the project. And the system we came up with was this mirrored box. The box starts here, so that's as the entranceway, and then it spreads around down the side here, so it's like the cube. And then it goes in through this wall, which you then see on this wall here. So that's the same cube. The way that we describe it is our experiment in reflective ergonomics. So you're bouncing the light around. So if you see the reflection here of the trees, of the buildings, whereas here, for instance, you just get this plain wall. So we wanted to try and get the life of Barcelona into the apartment. And this is obviously a natural barrier for the kitchen area, so you don't feel like you're walking in on the kitchen. You feel like you're walking into a hallway. However, with the reflective ergonomics, you can... What do you mean by reflective ergonomics? <laughs> Just really the play of the form, um, yeah. so that you know how the light bounces, really. And it's really important in buildings like this to get the light passing through, because the way it was designed before, it was literally tiny nooks and crannies, small rooms, dark spaces. So we just had to open it all up. And the fantastic thing about this apartment was we were able to do that because you only have one low bearing wall, which is this one. And the rest of the space is very flexible. So we work hard um, in reinforcing beams and putting the industrial fixtures in so we could then go about connecting the, the areas and then putting this area in the middle, which houses all the services. So we've used some of the boxes storage space. So, um, I mean, you've got areas here, your utilities. Oh, yeah. So the idea was to basically create this space where you could put all the services inside. So all the areas you didn't need the natural light, we, we put the kitchen inside. And then on the back of the kitchen, which is the clever part, is the two en suites. Um, bedrooms. Now what Miguel Angel loves to do is to do playful ideas so this is like Narnia. You think it's a cupboard or a wardrobe and then it opens out and uh, yeah, you get the, uh, the warm glow of the golden cube. <laughs> the way we work with the towers is the bottom in the centre we had just the white and then gradually the yellow became denser so gradually the intensity increases so it creates this, this golden feel. This is actually the back of the kitchen, so this is part of the box. And then on the other side of the wall here, the other side, you have the second bathroom, which is a, a mirror copy of this one. So all the services are, are contained in this box, all the places you don't need the, the light to come in. So there is a central part that is like a core of services exactly. and reflection. Uh, but yeah. And also the angles are not easy either. No. So if you look here, for instance, what they worked on very hard is to try and get these vertical lines where the, the transgression of the light is coming directly through the apartment. So, so nothing is blocked off, so you've got a vertical where you can, you can stand in one corner here on this balcony and you can, you can basically see all the way through to here. It's nice because you're right, like there's not many windows. Under no, because the, the issue is you've your views onto these party walls. You've got one party wall, another party wall, and then this fantastic view down, down the street with the trees. But then you, you don't feel like it when you're in here. So we wanted to, yeah, to really mirror it all. Um, I mean, even the back of the door. So when you close it off, so it's all, we, we just wanted, yeah, a wall of light coming through. We like to think of like a kaleidoscope of natural light. So the cube in the middle is acting like a kaleidoscope where it's bouncing all the light around this general area. Now we're in, in the actual centre of the cube, which we wanted to do is like a, have a golden glow.
So this is the center of the kitchen. You've got this area where it's just white and then, and then on this wall, you can see it just rising there to this area. And then if you look underneath, it gets even denser there. So you've really got this reflection, this luminosity. So whereas this would have been a very dark, you know, space um, with no natural light because of this reflective qualities and because of these spaces that allow um, the connection between the areas and it allows the, uh, yeah, the light to, to pass through. It's almost like the Babel library from Borges, which is yeah. all these hexagons or cubes put together so you can get from one to the other and everything is okay. connected in kind of like a rational way, but at the same time it's very XRX. Yes. But also it's probably colors. Yeah, the, the colors we chose as well was really, well, for the luminosity, but for the playfulness as well where you've got little touches here with the handles of the doors. Uh, you have the beams painted in that colour. You have, yeah, the handles again, uh, just to highlight. Yeah. So as long as there is natural light coming from the few windows you have, yep. this system is mm. going to reflect the light inside, so yep. you'll have the feeling you have more yeah, light. Yeah, I mean, you do, and it okay. feels really, really uh, spacious. And we've got 3 metres 20, the height here, um, and you've got the old, it's a 1910 Champler building. So these are the original beams and we wanted to try and keep as much of the history as possible. We just took off the false ceiling and this is what appeared here. And then by adding little splashes of pink this, and then the yellow and you get these amazing angles as well. You can literally see the history of the building seeping through your ceilings. So how did you manage, you know, Barcelona is a quite intense city and this apartment feels very tranquil. I mean really through the carpentry um, because when you do open it up, yeah, the difference in sound. So we've got yeah, the double glass but also the carpentry. Yeah. But then at the back you have this really tranquil area. So this area here is the day area but at the back you also have a, a tranquil space where it's like a balance. We have an evening area. You can chill out here in the evening. And you also have your guest area here. It's set up now as a guest area, but you can do. This goes all the way around. Yeah, then you literally have a, a nice privatised area here. Just in the evening, it just blocks the lights out. So that'd be a room within a room? Yeah, I mean, it's... I just felt it was a nice feature because, I mean, if you've got this area here, which is a dining area, we wanted this to be with a raised bed area. And we also... So what we wanted to create was an area, like an alcove. So you, this was going to come with the air conditioning, so we thought we'd, we'd raise that level up as well to create this alcove here. And then when you bring the door across... Mm -hmm. And then blocks the kitchen out. So it's two layers of uh, two sliding doors and it just closes it. I suppose it's the contrast between a space in the daytime and a nocturnal space because now you have a very comfy, uh, tr tranquil area. So you can close it all off and you can really feel now this sort of tranquility, can't you? With, uh, uh, and what we wanted to do is have, have this connection uh, with the kitchen so when people aren't sleeping in here, uh, then it opens up into a study or a dining area where you can you can eat here but you've got the connection so if people are cooking we can open this all out um, and then we have a fantastic connection through to the kitchen um, so you can chat sociably if your partner or your friends are cooking um, you're seated working um, but also you have this diagonal um, connection to to the back space here um, and if you sit down here yeah you can uh, from this angle, you can see straight across from one side of the apartment to the other side of the apartment. You've got lots of storage under here. We wanted to try and utilise the space as much as possible. Yeah, we really looked to like Japanese architecture, very minimalistic, you know, working with woods. This bed, just with a mattress. And then what we did is we put a headboard in ourselves. All we've done is, these are the side tables, which is a separate piece of wood by eliminating the legs or drawers. This was our aim really to keep it as minimalistic as possible. With the reflection, I think it's even more important because even anything excess is reflected, right? Yeah, right? there's only a few pieces of furniture in here, but because everything's bounced back, you multiply each piece of furniture by two. And then this is exactly the mirror of the other bathroom. <laughs> yeah, so the same system, so. Yeah, and then they gradually yeah, become more dense as you were. Uh... Bloom. <laughs> yeah. So mirroring something, is mirroring a wall, uh, I mean, is that fairly simple to do? To be honest, no, no. It's, it's actually quite complex. Uh, it's the laser cutting, so it's getting the angles. Yeah, it was a bit of a complex issue, especially 
around, if, you, if you're not cutting straight angles, um, you're cutting around the beams, then you've got to make a template and then you've got to apply that template onto the mirror and then cut around. If you've got lots of different panels, then it gets complicated. So we work really hard in trying to get the lines to match up. So yeah, it was complicated. And we purposely left this area as a separate piece in case it got smashed, hit with feet. Um, then if that cracks, we can simply replace that piece rather than having to replace the whole panel. Um, so it was these little things that we were yeah, thinking about. Then we had to work carefully with the door heights. So if you look at the door height, that's the door there. And it has to then take the same line. Um, this height here, the step had to take the same line as this here. And this was one of the big constraints of the project was to try and get all the lines matching up. But it was important because it was the whole essence of the project. The kitchen, we wanted to just go for a very clean white finish. So that's, that's yeah, the block there and uh, yeah, the freezer area. So a good job on you know, leaving a lot of things very yeah. minimalist. So yeah. what's the, what's the balance there? You have to keep some stuff out. So how do you manage to let's say show only what you want to show? Um, I think uh, hit just hidden integration. So you integrate a lot of the things. So that's hidden away. Um, you have yeah, you have the clever little that looks like a column. However, when you open it, it houses the electricity boxes, the internet, the services. So that was the idea here. Also, these are quite deceptive. Yeah, so they house... Huge. House, yeah, so it's there quite yeah. deceptive. Yeah, I mean, we've got storage space under the, under the beds on both sides, so... You know, we've got enough storage space. With, we've got two, two huge drawers here to open up. That was the whole reason of the project. We, we were discussing how to get this into the, into the project. And we were trying to draw the light and the reflection and the the visuals of uh, of Barcelona and bring it inside. Yeah.